All right, I'm back from vacation. I'm back in the dining room, man. Look what we've got. Here we go. Yes. Welcome back to Nick's Garage and the heart of the operation, Nick's Dino Room. This small reinforced cell in the back of the shop is where Nick spends many late nights and weekends, testing his builds and getting the most out of the classic engines that come to his shop. Today, Nick has a rare numbers matching Mopar on the dyno, and we're all invited to watch as this iconic 1970 engine is put through the paces. Welcome to Nick's Garage, and finally we're back in the dining room with another Mopar engine. And this is something new, but this is not very common. This is the first time I'm, I've got a six pack or a six barrel on a 3D3B engine. Not an RB, not a 440, but a B engine. But actually what we've got here is a 3D3 with a 440 crankshaft, which is a stroke of 3.750, which equals 426 cubic inch. It's got the bore of a four and a quarter of a Hemi, and of course the stroke now of a Hemi. So what you got when you put it all together, we got a 426 B engine. And Manny, this is the first time I'm gonna try this on a dyno. What do you think it's gonna do? Uh, we should be somewhere in the vicinity of the 500s, I think. I hope we get 500, I doubt it. I'll tell you what we got here. We got a- 499? Uh, <laughs> no, we got a 426 cubic inch. We've got cast iron heads that are ported out with the 208 intake valve. 174 okay. exhaust valve, which you did the uh, valve job That's right. and the porting. We've also got a 500 lift hydraulic flat tappet cam because we need enough vacuum for power brakes. Right. And of course, my client wanted to go with a six pack, six barrel, because it's a primitive we call it a six barrel. Of course. So we put it on and we have a compression ratio of 10.10, uh, 10 10.10, or should I say 10.1? Uh, 10.1. Okay. So I'm, I'm really, I'm hoping to get at least close to 500 foot pounds of torque and at least 425 horsepower. Now, if I can achieve that, I'd be very happy. Well, you have the compression, you have the flow, you have a cam. Let's see what it does. Well, you know what? We've got to start by breaking in the cam. Sounds good. I've also installed it, in, which I don't usually do it often. Maybe other engine builders don't do it. I put an extra liter or extra quart of oil just to break in the cam. So after we break in the cam, we're going to remove that one liter then okay. doing our testing. Sounds good. So uh, we've got headers on it. And uh, after this is done, well, I don't know what kind of power we're going to make. We're thinking of going exhaust manifolds. Good but idea. that, we don't know yet. I'm still looking for the right-hand side exhaust manifold, which I don't have on hand. Okay. I will leave the engine on the dynamometer. Will, are we, are we gonna do a future dyno? Probably are, again, with the manifolds. But today, we are here to test it as it is. And then in the last few tests, we're gonna put the air cleaner on. Mm -hmm. Like someone tells me from Detroit, Michigan, always tune, or should I say, test your six-pack on a dyno with the air cleaner on, which we're gonna do that at the end. But in the meantime, let's get it started, break in the cam, and see how it goes. Sounds like a plan, Nick. And by the way, this is the engine matching motor to the 1970 Roadrunner that's going to Sydney, Australia. Yes, it's a beautiful 70 Roadrunner convertible, vitamin C orange, and this is the engine that's going to go in this car. It's an automatic car, it's a beautiful looking car. We're doing a few little things on it, or should I say, We've got a big list on it. Pretty big, yeah. Okay, but right now what I'm concerned about is getting the engine running. Because after that, I want to see my torque numbers so we can order a torque converter for Theo. Got it. So in the meantime, let's get it running. Let's uh, get the timing done on it, of course. Absolutely. And then let's blast it. Okay, so uh, I guess we're ready to get started. Let's turn everything on and uh, get it done. put on the water line, the main switch. 
get the timing line out, and let's get going. Sounds good. I'll turn on the computer in the meantime. All right, I'll get the main switch. You get the main switch, I'll turn on the water. computer. The water line, yes, of water. course. This goes here. Put on the software. I'm gonna put my phone away. Dino sessions can be short and sweet, or they can be long ordeals full of unexpected issues and difficult fixes. As this engine is numbers matching to a beautiful car and has been somewhat modified to add power, it's fair to say that Nick and Manny are feeling just a little bit of first start anxiety. Okay. Timing lights ready. Okay. You want to hit the fuel switch? Here we go. Oh, Manny. Yeah, we have to add fuel. some fuel. I forgot. That's okay. I got it. Okay, let me go get the tank. Petrocan 94 it is, sir. You might as well fill it up, Manny. You got it, Nick. After breaking, we're gonna do some testing if everything goes well. Yeah, we've done this for uh, a month. I've been on vacation for three weeks, and we didn't have an edge on the dyno for a week before I left, so. It's been what, five weeks we haven't been in the dining room, so let's get some practice here and let's get going. You're full, Nick. Thank you, sir. We've got a full 290 bore. The stroke of a 440 or a Hemi, which is the 3750 crankshaft, equals 433.6 cubic inches with a 40 overbore on a 3D3. So let's get it. Uh, let's make sure. That... Manny, I'm going to take off the cap. Just want to see where the number one is pointing. We're going to make sure uh, it starts on first shot because, you know, this is a cam breaking. I want it to start right away. You know, one of the most important things in an engine build is breaking in a flat top of cam, and I gotta make sure I get it right, because if it doesn't break in correctly, it's a big job. So number one is here? Yeah, five o'clock position. So if it turns this way, oh, that looks good, eh? You see? Yeah, it's right, right about one. here. Right there? Okay, so it looks pretty good. Yeah. When I set the timing light at 30 degrees, or 32, whatever. Yeah. Definitely close. And then you're gonna see here. Where's my marker? Is that your zero? Yeah, this is my zero mark. You line up the marks together? Yep. With a 32 or 34 degrees, we're good. We're going at, uh, you can even run at 34 degrees, doesn't matter, 34. And the, uh, don't worry about the vacuum on the distributor, should be all right. Okay, I'm Is ready. the distributor loose? We got fuel. Oh yeah, if it's not loose, we got a call. We got fuel in the carburetor. I checked for full throttle, we got that. PCV valve will be connected after break-in. That loose, but it wasn't that We're get more, actually advance it a little bit towards you. Towards you. Okay. Okay? Gave it a little advance. Yeah, I want, because you have more chance of starting it easier when you have more advance. Okay, water's in. Fuel, you filled up the fuel, I think we're ready. All right. Don't leave it too loose, it might turn on its own, eh? You know what? Is that no, seven, you're good. 716s. No, half, half inch. inch. Have the key right here, Manny. Have the key right here. Okay, I'm, I'm ready. I think I got everything. I just, you know, <coughs> I haven't been doing anything here for five weeks, so I just well, want it. If it makes you feel any better, the machine itself was uh, feel, feeling neglected. So. Listen, and don't forget, these are slightly used carburetors, from what I know. Okay. Uh, do they work? I don't know. We'll find out. Theo bought them off uh, Joe, one okay. of my other clients. You know, the, the carburetors, and they, they look pretty clean. I mean, uh, 
Do they work? I don't know. We have the old two sets to put on and let's see how it goes. Sounds good, Nick. All right. Give me a minute. When it goes on, I'm already starting. All right. It looks like I'm ready to go. Are you ready? Ready, sir. Okay, here we go. Ignition, fuel pump, I'm giving it gas. Here we go. Look at the oil pressure when I get it running. Okay, you're good. We're good, eh? 22. Vacuum's good. Yeah, I got a lot of vacuum. Holy smokes. Maybe I should have went with a bigger cam. Let's see what she does. Let's see what she does. Your uh, air fuel is good. It's yeah, decent. Yeah, it's good. The choke is tied open. RPM 2200, 2300. Oil pressure is good. Temperature's coming up. I'm very. We got a very strong signal vacuum. Yep. Wow. That's, good. that's a good. That's good news, Nick. Is it? Yeah. Let's yeah, see yeah. what it has on idle. I'm sure it'll be fine. Let's just see. Uh, I'm gonna go around and check for a leak yeah, in the back. Go ahead. I'm gonna check the clock. So at 10 after 11, we're gonna shut it down. Then we're gonna start doing some testing after that. I'm gonna go take a look with Manny and see what's going on outside. I also want to say, this is the one we did a video with a compression ratio of 8.2 when we took up the engine from the car. Right now we got a 10.1 on this buildup. I'm sure it's going to work with the fuel that they've got in Australia. We're using 94 octane and we'll see how it goes. But I'm sure it's going to make a lot more power than when he had it when he first bought the car. So let's see how it goes. Sounds good so far. We've got Eagle Canadian rods and we also have flat top forged pistons by JE. Should be good, I hope so. Did a nice valve job on that. We balanced the engine. We went 40 overboard on it because it was originally it was 30, so we went to 40. We had custom made pistons for it that took a while to get. Oil pressure seems good. 2200 RPMs. I just hope it goes well because it took a while for me to build this engine. I've got Manny with me today to give me a hand in case anything goes wrong. Well, uh, let's see how it goes. So far, so good. No leaks. No leaks. Good. The water's good. It's at 168. So far, so good. Pressure 71, that's good. Oil 
Water's staying at 167. I'm gonna leave it there. I think so. We're gonna go full advance at 34 degrees. Yeah. We're gonna take off the uh, vacuum. Yeah. Well, we still have to drain a liter of oil out before yes, yeah. we uh, we go yeah, there. Yeah, I got a lot of zinc in there too, just to be sure. I'm surprised got a very strong. A lot of vacuum. It's yeah. it's smooth. It sounds good. Well, give it to Then after. Then after. Then after. Yeah. Want to make sure I uh, want to make sure those lifters are turning. Yeah, absolutely. So the cam could be uh, broken in. Yeah, you don't want any uh, issues with the uh, my main cam concern. Wire. Yeah, that's right. My main concern is that there's no oil leak, but of course everything else. So far, I don't see any leaks. Nothing showing in the rear. Nothing in the front. Let's get it hot. Fuel is good. Let's get it hot and okay. push it. Then we'll see. Just to let you guys know, this is the matching motor to that Roadrunner, so, uh, you know. It's important that it goes well. That's right. <laughs> that's right. One horsepower per cubic inch. That would be good. It's a with the oversize. It's a 433. But what is a 383? What is your 383? Factory 383 is 335 horsepower. Torque? 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 I'm not sure. Torque on a 33. Let's check it out. 1970. Here we go. Here we go. 1973 3 right from the factory it's a four twenty five four twenty five torque on a three eighty three yes at thirty two hundred rpm okay so for the three eighty three you stroked it yeah and what's and what's the uh, fuel re uh, compression ratio supposed to be sorry four twenty five torque at thirty four hundred okay sorry. And what's the uh, the horsepower is 335 at 5200. What's the the compression ratio? Good question. 9.5. So you gave it half a point more. Yeah, just a little bit over half a point more. What about a stroke? Yes. And compression. Right. And heads that flow with the cam. You know what? Time will tell. Yep. You know, I waited a long time to get this engine built. Oil pressure is good. Is it? Yeah. 16 so Temperature's yeah. Temperature's good. That's good. We're, we're getting there, Nick. Yeah. How much time? 10, Ten more minutes. minutes. No more coffee. That's okay. You know what? We have so much coffee from so many viewers of ours from around the world. We never run out of coffee, so I got to thank you guys. Thanks, guys. Much appreciated, because I do love my coffee. Me too. Let's, let's rev it up a little bit. Sounds good. Yeah. This is a voodoo cat. It's got five, about uh, almost very close to 500 left. You know what, Nick? What? 
I'm, I'm hopeful this is a good uh, this is a good package. You and have. I, I, we, the numbers make sense. Let's hope so. The most important thing, those carburetors were like on point for starting. Well, let's see how it goes on full throttle. Then at the very end, we're gonna do what our buddy tells us what to do, put an air cleaner on it. So, uh, yeah. which makes sense. I mean, right. you set up the, uh, you set up a carburetor with a plate. You know, one thing I love about the dyno when I, when I got a six pack, I just love it. Yeah. It's not very often we get six packs, but then again, I, I think we've got more six packs in this dyno than any dyno room that I, that I know of. We've done a lot of six packs here. Except maybe Chrysler. And this is, <laughs> this is not common for me on a 3D3 with a 440 crank, which equals a 426 cubic inch. You know what, something new to me, let me tell you. When I was on vacation, there's one thing I couldn't wait to do is get back in the dining room and do some testing. And what do we got? Something new, 3D3 to the six mile. I don't know what it's gonna do, I'll be very surprised because I really, really wanna see what this is gonna do. You know, we had some issues, uh, which way to go, building an engine on this road on it, but then at the end, Theo and I decided, well, let's go with the 33, go 40 over, not 60, and hopefully it goes well. Yeah, 60 is a little much, but 40, yeah, you know, 40 is a good number. My client says, Nick, you know what, go for it. Let's see what it does. I wanted to keep it simple. It's a cruising car, it's a convertible. I wanted to put on some cast iron heads, make a good valve job, pour them out with the brand new manly valves. And of course, we brought up the compression. We have the heads ported out. And uh, the flow was what? Almost 260 CFM out of 500 lift. That's the flow on the cylinder head. So uh, let's see what it does. Yeah. And you know, I've always loved the six pack, always. Uh, six pound, man. Six barrel, <laughs> yes. Six barrel for Plymouth, That's six right. pack for Dodge. There's just something about those uh, triple carbs that yeah. just... It is. It is. They're and loud. You know, we're debating going back with exhaust manifolds. Well, we don't have them at the moment. I do have them. But I want to find the correct gear on the right-hand side because always the one on the right-hand side is cracked. And on this particular car, he's got the wrong manifold on the right side. I've been trying to find one for the right-hand side, which I haven't located one yet. Even in Carlisle, when I went, I didn't find any amount of for the year 1970. But before I take this engine off off the dyno, I will run it with manifold. But as of today, we're only running it with headers and see how it goes. Temperature's good, oil's good, manifold vacuum is good. Few more minutes about seven and then when we do the uh, when we drop the uh, one liter or one quart we'll go with the dipstick mark the 426 is this the combination that they call the wedge it is a wedge all of when their valves are in straight because line it is a nascar wedge. nascar used to use a 426 wedge at one point. Yeah, before the Hemi came out, before That's right. 64. That's right. Yeah, it was a 426 wedge. Well, this is a, it was a 426 RB raised block, which okay. like a, the taller More, block, right. tall deck. This is a short deck, which is a 3D3. That's why we call it the B block. Gotcha. It's not an RB, it's a B, which is the uh, short deck. Over the 440 crank, which is a 3750, equals 426. Because the 3D3, and a Hemi, 426 Hemi, have the same bore, four and a quarter. Go take a look, see? Sure.
Manny, yes, sir. you want to bring the I RPM idol, uh, yeah. the idol up. got an extra quart of oil in there so I'm going to remove that extra cord right now right I'm going to set up the timing and then we're going to start blasting it the uh, gonna, the, the smell that I that I was picking up though on off the engine is probably the zinc you think so you know what it's uh it's got a very distinct smell well I have got zinc additive in there plus I got zinc oil well you know what that'll protect the uh, lifters for sure you know me and uh, two things I'm very concerned about is oil leaks and make sure the cam does not get wiped out. I think we're in good shape this time. Okay, so let's take out a leader. All right, uh, drain let plug. It. All right, just let it cool down a bit. See where it is, where my fingernail is. There it is, it's right here. There's the full mark, we're right here. So we got one leader. We got one leader too much, so we're gonna take it out. I'd like to increase the oil pressure a bit on idle when it's hot, but we'll take care of that after. It's hot. Once you take up the plug, you can't put it back. So I'll let it, let it cool down. So far, so good though. It sounds good. So now I can connect the PCB valve. Yeah. All right. Shall we? As well. Okay. Actually, we should check in. Right, let's put it on after a few tests. All right. I want to make sure that the secondary yeah, is open up. You. Yeah, it's hot. It's hot. Give it some time. So far, so good. The cam break-in period went smoothly and the engine is showing promise. Nick takes a few minutes to have another cup of coffee and a piece of toast while the oil cools down. Then it's time to get back to work. With the break-in complete, testing can begin. And you know, it's very common. I have a lot of these uh, engines. But then, then again, uh, like the bearing clearance and all that. This one here, I got one and a half thousand. That's Sometimes great. I get one and a quarter, one, okay. one thousand on, you know, on the connector rods. Or even on the side clearance on the rods. Have you ever seen any bluing? No. No. So they're not, uh, that's the right. What's the factory clearance? What's the window? Uh, almost a uh, thou. Okay. I usually use a lot of a thou, thou and a half nine. That's fine. That's what I've done. That's perfect. On the crank, sometimes I go uh, about two thousand on the mains. Okay. Let's get creative. Good luck, man. Don't get <laughs> burned now. You do this, and I'm just going to find a little washer for the spring. Sounds good, Nick. Like I've done with other 440s and the Moper engines. Keep going. Hold on. 
Gotta change fingers. Yeah, we're still a bit too high, Manny. Yeah, okay. I wanna drain just a little bit more? Yes, sir. You know, I always put an extra liter now lately on the cam break in because, you know, the splash also helps break in the cam. So, it's just an insurance policy I use. And uh, once the cam's broken in at 2000 RPM for 20 minutes, it's done. We take out the liter and check. then we do our testing. Ah, 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 ah. Woo, let's try it there, Manny. Let's try it there, okay? Yes, sir. Lock it up. Yeah, we took out about a liter. It's okay. All right. Should I, uh, anyways, in some case, you know, sometimes when you use the Eagle, can it, the Eagle rods, the cyclones are more than factory. Right. I lose oil pressure there, right? You do? I mean, I'm telling you, I don't know. For some reason, every time I use Eagle rods on idle, I lose oil pressure. So what I do is I hop up the spring. Okay. To bring it to 30 pounds, 35. Get a little more volume. Let's see what it has. Okay. There you go. Here we go. Let me see if this is going to do the job. Look, it's a very, very, very small washer. Okay. Look, I'm going to give you the... That's all I do. Just put this little washer. That's all I do. Put okay. this back uh, yeah. when you're done. Here we go. Because, uh, yeah, it was starting to fall off. All right, let's see. Let's see what it does. Well, it doesn't take much. No. You want to check the timing, Nick? Yes, I am. We're gonna go to at least three grand, 3400 RPM, keep it at 34, 36 degrees. All right. You block the back. Actually, we'll go to 36. I know these guys, they're going like 36. <laughs> okay, All here right. we go. I'll start her up. You block the vacuum port? Yeah, no, I left the vacuum off. Okay. Once I rev it, like we're gonna rev, take off the rod. Okay. Uh, keep it at about 3400 RPM, okay. 35. And then I'll set the timing, let it idle, put the vacuum hose back on, That's and let's go sure. test. Yes, sir. I'm ready. What do I need? Oh, well, let me start it. Start at 28, uh, well, we'll start at 3,000. I think we're good. Are we ready? Yes, sir. Okay, let's shut the door and let's go. Oh yeah, we have to adjust the absorber, maybe. What was the last uh, engine on here? I don't, uh, I don't remember what I had here last. All right, as soon as you load it up, we'll know right away. Okay, here we go. Let's get in the yellow zone, right? Yes, sir. Here we go.
makes myself a stumble when I die. Yeah. I'm running look at style on fast title. Now I gotta check the secondaries. See if they close. get that stumble on a six pack. You know, I try to bring it up slowly, but but on the car, I don't have that stumble. But anyway, it doesn't matter. I'm gonna go slower. No, on the car, it's different. I know. Then we're gonna do what Max says. Yes, Put sir. the air cleaner on when you dyno testing. We'll get to that later on. But in the meantime, uh, I just want to- oil pressure? I got oil pressure. I also want to check it hot on idle again. Okay. In some cases, it might need the shim, maybe not. Okay. But first of all, the uh, secondary is one of them is stuck open. It gives me a- did you notice the RPM yeah, was like a two exactly. and a half thousand? So what do we do to uh, this maybe... here? Somehow this has got to do something with it right here. See that little slack? Hold on. See that little slack? I got to adjust the rod to shorten it, ah, like gotcha. so. Gotcha. Watch this. Okay. Uh, screwdriver or pair of pliers? I just got to pry this off like that. Then we will shorten it like so. So turning it pulls it, it back all the way. Yeah, I just turned it in. Gotcha. Hey, did we make some good power there? I don't know. I didn't see that. I didn't look. I didn't I look. I was so excited that the, the take a look. Tell me what we got. Take a look. Uh, oh, Nick, uh, you're gonna be happy. What do we got? I'm not telling you. I want to see the expression on your face. Okay. What do we got? Come and see, man. Look at this. Torque. Look at that. Wow, 497. Yeah, 496, yeah. 497, uh, 497.4. Uh, first run. And look at your horsepower. 421. Okay, we might have to go at a higher RPM. It's looking good. You, Let's look at I like to run at 160 degrees Fahrenheit, just to like any other test. Right. Just to be on the safe side. Air fuel ratio looks good, man. I think we're gonna hit the 500 uh, foot pounds of torque. E it's running kind of lean, eh? Uh, yeah. I like to have it in the uh, mid-12s. So on the top side, it's yeah, starting to lean on you. It's 13. This is raw measured torque and power. But you know what? Oh my God. Wait a minute. We, were, we might not have to adjust that when I do the... We could Carburetor. get more power by running it rich. We could. You and know what? the thing is, will the base plate make a difference now? Maybe. Yeah, we're going to do that after. But first okay. of all, let's bring it at a higher RPM. Okay. Let's go. Let's bring it to 5.5. Uh, five. Yep. 5.5. Five. Here we go. You're good numbers, man. I'm really happy. I want to bring the torque up. That's what I want. Well, Nick, you're, you're knocking on the door. And you know what? I'm, I'm going to tell you something. We still have too much oil in the motor, but we'll still. wait. Let's see. Let, let's, <laughs> we'll leave let's, that at the end. Okay. We're going to go to 5,500 RPM right now. Let's cool it down. Are you ready? I'm I won't touch the timing, nothing. Here we go. Fan. Put the fan on. Yep. Let's go. One more try. No oil leak, say. Eh? No oil leak. No oil leak. So okay, far. shut the door. Let's go. You got it. All right, here we go. Come on, let's hit that 500. Yeah. Put on the front. Here we go. Let's hit the stump. I'm gonna bring it up slowly. Make it run richer, Manny. But before I go there, there the carb is stuck. Again. Let me go see it. 500. <laughs> we hit the 500 foot pots of torque. Yes, sir. Same thing, hey? The back one's a little loose, but okay. Yeah, 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 okay. Should I shut it down? Yes, yes. 
will adjust the idle up and you should be good. Yeah, yeah, you know, this, this is why we have a six pack. But you know what? I'm trying to bring the RPM slow up yeah. for the stumble. But I like, I like to have it richened out a bit. Maybe we should change. But changing the jets on this is not easy. And there's no jets on the outboard carburetor. There's only metering plates. But in the meantime, if we go with the exhaust manifold, it's going to run a little bit more on the rich right. side. So let's uh, leave it for now. Yeah. Let's, let's take a look. What do the numbers show? Let's check our numbers. Okay, you got the 500 in the torque. <laughs> so you are buying lunch. <laughs> okay, so we got 507 foot pounds of torque at 3600 RPM. And the horsepower 426? 426. There you, you go. got to be kidding. <laughs> well, you know what? It is 40 overbore. It's a 433 cubic inch, but originally, it, but it is a 426, so we got 426. And it's got compression. It's got compression. So it's there. And you know, if we made it richer, it'd get, get a little bit more. Yeah, but like you said, you have to check with manifolds. I know, you and know what? And the base plate and the air filter, but this is good. This is freaking awesome. You know, we're going to lose power once we put manifolds okay, on it. But Nick, it's there. I know. It's what, there. You know what I'm concerned about? Everything, everything. I'm concerned about yeah. cam breaking, mm -hmm. oil leaks. I want to make sure. But that yeah. six pack has a big stumble. But then again, they're factory. They're designed that way. Did you notice that they open up too early, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, they have to be delayed a bit. You know what? But Can we they, try something? You know what the problem is? What? It's worse than that because here it's on a dyno. When it's in the car, that's when you need to tune them. Because depending on how the car's moving and with what gears, they don't work. Tell that to my viewers. I tell them that. Once <laughs> it's in the car, it doesn't stumble like that. It just That's goes right. on. That's right. But here, we're just looking at maximum wide open throttle power. Yeah, you need to see how the car responds to you the You think engine. we should just back up the timing a little bit? Just I could back it up two degrees. <laughs> Let me mark it. I've got it marked. I have an idea of where to go with two degrees without using the timing light. Okay. Not so many. We'll mark it here. Yeah. And then let me, let me mark it. I'll okay. back it up. And they'll do another test. All right. But running, it runs lean, man. I'm not crazy about that. Ah. Uh, you know what? You know that there's more horsepower to be had. I know. I don't. Because the torque is, it's there. It's running 13.5 uh, air fuel ratio. The mm. most I go is usually 13.1. I know. But then again, if I go with manuals, I don't want to start playing with exactly. the carburetor. Exactly. That's the whole thing. But you know what? We got our 507 foot pounds of torque. I'm happy. That's good. Because uh, Theo was looking for a lot of torque. And he's got more torque than my Kowalski 440. That's true. I had 495, he's got 507. You know what? Let's keep trying. But then again, he's got hitters. I don't. That's right. So, what are the that, manifolds going to do? Now? I know. I want to find the correct manifold, put them on, and we'll try it and see what goes on. Sounds let's good. see the figures before we install the engine in the car. Yep. And in the meantime, let's see now. It's the air fuel ratio that bothers me. You know, you, you don't want to cook any pistons, but no. I don't think they're going to get They're not going to cook at the ratio that you're at. <laughs> yeah, we hit 500 plus foot pounds of torque, so I'm happy for that. This is awesome. I'm happy. This is awesome. 3,600 RPM, we got our max torque in. This I'm thing's going to fry tires like nobody's it's business. It's going to fry tires. Okay, let me just back up the timing just a little bit. You know, like the, the Aussies say, he's going he's gonna to basically melt those bags. That's right. I'm just going to back up the timing a couple of degrees. Maybe... Uh, my game, my news, I'm not sure, sure. Listen, this is the one way to find out what it likes best. Yeah. Wait, yeah, right there. Check out Nick's new official Mopar timing hammer. Repeated use may cause dependence. Not available in any store. <laughs> wow. <Well, laughs> you know what? what? Okay. No word of a lie. That's... Uh, just make sure there are no wires touching. Yeah, let's double check everything, yeah? This is all yeah. good on this yeah, side. Yeah, it's all good. Your side? The other My side? My side is good. You know okay. what? Look, no release. Oh. Nick, you know, the last news. one I did, it wasn't very lucky. It was leaking oil. But this one, it seems good. Wow. So now, is there any way I can reach in it temporarily with the headers? Uh, anyway. What do you think? Not Look really. You could spray fuel. No, this is a full barrel setup, would be no problem, or else I'll just change the two chest. No. But removing this carburetor is a job and a half. Wait a minute. And then there's a fuel line. There's a lot of work involved on a six pack, let me oh, tell I you. Know. You know what, not for money. everybody. It's not for everybody. Okay, we'll do one thing at a time. Let's try it. 
I think so. Let's go. Yes. Okay, here we go. It'll help you out. Let's see what it does. Here we go. And I forget. Did I use these? I keep forgetting. I don't know. Yeah, I think you have used them, Nick. That's why they're here. I'm so anxious with this here, man. Here we go. The water's at 135, eh? Yeah. Pressure. Yeah, but you're at 500, your, your idle is way low. Very lean on idle, eh? I want to bring the water temperature up. Look at the idle, it's very low. Manny, want to bring it up, up? Yeah. for me? Bring it to like 950, 1000, okay? is unusual. It's giving Nick cause for suspicion. Manny, did you notice the idle went down? Yeah. There's two cylinders working on this side. There are two cylinders working on this side. So you got a V4. We got four cylinders working, four not working. That means there's something wrong with the carburetor. It's only yeah. feeding fuel with one barrel. And you notice it, it's yeah. two cylinders uh, yeah, outside, two on the inside. So according I according to the wrong. layout with the uh, intake. <clears throat> yeah, so now we have a problem. Something right. wrong with the carburetor. Oof. Okay, we got an issue here. You know what, I'll start it up, rev it up, you're gonna see, you're gonna see no fuel going down the uh, venture. Yeah, I see it on the right side. Is it? It's, it's, uh... Is it blocked? There's, there's a ton of fuel coming down on the right side. Right now? Yeah. Just watch your head. I just took it out. Oh, wow. Watch your head. I see it. You know what? Don't forget, these are practically used carburetors. I have no idea what they've done to them. And the jets in there should be 63s on the factory. Let me start her up, take a look. If I don't like what I see, we gotta take out the center card. Okay. Here we go. Shooters are working, there must be something on the 
I'll keep an eye out on the fuel because you know it's strange. Was something blocked in the carburetor or what? Sounds like it. Because look, I know there was something went wrong there. Yeah, and okay. the shooters were fine. It was yeah. wet on it was wet on the passenger side, dry on the driver's side. That's why I revved it up and then it and cleared. It, it wasn't shooting fuel. Then all of a sudden both of them were shooting fuel. Yeah. I was gonna just hear a fuel mixture on idle, but here, let's check it out right now. All I did was back up the timing two degrees. Yeah, that's not that's not the problem. Okay, are you ready? Yes, sir. See, this is what I wanted to do. Okay, I'm ready. Let's give it a shot. Here we go. I don't think the engine liked it either. <laughs> there we go again, the rods are stuck. Okay, hold on. timing I don't think I like the horsepower and the torque readings okay look no I, I think uh, I'll put the timing back where it was 36 yeah 35 35 okay matter of fact I'll try 30 actually I'll bring it to 36 and see what it does you think so yeah but I, it doesn't like it when it is I can see all right <clears throat> get the calibrated hammer oh no oh no I, I can see it the calibrated fingers I run the water temperature at 160 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay. okay. I know. I know she's 180 in the car or whatever. That's fine. But you see, I try to make it not stumble. <clears throat> but we still have an air cleaner to put on after. Yeah. Remind me to get the three gaskets. Right. The base, the studs. I want to do another test with the timing now at 35, 36. But well, what happened to that carburetor? All of a sudden, they didn't want to work. Uh, Nick, uh, like you said, they're used carburetors. You don't know what their history is. Was something in the fuel line? Apparently, apparently they used them for, uh, for I don't know, I don't know what engine they were on, but uh, they weren't used for very long because they're practically, when I when I got them here, they looked pretty clean. Look at yeah. them. No, like I said, Nick, it's uh, they they've traveled, they've been used. Who knows what's inside? Well, you know what? That's why we're here. <coughs> That's why it's on the dyno. I gotta make sure they work good. And you notice the stumble when I go slower. Yeah. There's less of a stumble, so I'm gonna do it again. Let's put the air cleaner on after. I want to see if we get back that 500 foot pounds of torque. Yeah. I brought the timing back where it was. I want to make sure the air fuel ratio is good on idle. Then again, that's another thing to figure out when we put go, yeah. if we do go to exhaust manifolds. But in the meantime, let's work with what we got. Sounds good. I just want to make a test with the uh, timing back where it is. Let's okay. Go. Put the fan on. Fan on. Cool down the room. Put the A2 sensor on. Okay, here we go. Got a, got it warmed up a bit. And uh, let's see how it goes. All right. Here we go. I want to bring the water temperature up a little bit. Right. Oil pressure's still good. We still have too much oil in the engine. You know? That's okay. Anyways, let's see.
idle still sticks yeah. there, right? That's okay. We got the same power back at 425, 425.5. The torque was 497, 498. That's there. How's the engine? Is it good. Sounds good, Nick. I want to bring the RPM down. I can't. I want to. I want to bring it down a bit. Yeah, I don't know why it's stuck in. I like to get around 900 RPM on idle. Turn the boat right now. No, uh, you don't want to fix this. Uh, oh, two sensor. Yeah. Uh, what are you thinking? I'm thinking of I want. I every time I go back to idle, I want the car to idle 900, 950. Okay. And I got to fix this here, not on the car. Yeah. And uh, once we once we fix that, we're gonna go with the air cleaner on. Okay. Okay. I just want to make another test now. I put it at 35 degrees. Okay. Why? Can you tell me why? What? It's staying open? Uh, yeah, I gotta fix that. Unless we unhook it, rotate it through, and see if there's anything that's touching. Let's take out some more. Yeah? Yeah. We, have, we need still How much? Tomorrow. How high are Come we? Come and see. Come and see. I wanna show you. How high are you? Like you need half uh, a liter? Quite a bit. Come and see. Wait a minute. Let's, let's check our oil pressure. Look, your oil pressure is good. Yeah, yeah, it's there, it's there. Look, we got too much oil stuff. Yeah, we got way too much. Okay, you know what? I'll bring the container back. Bring me the container. I just wanted to let you guys know that we're taking oil out because we got way too much oil in there that I've added to break in the can. But we haven't taken out enough yet, so we're gonna bring it right down to the full level. Once man removes about half a half a liter or half a quarter. Then after that we resume our testing. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Okay, I think you're good there. Yeah? I'm gonna check the dipstick now. It's hot, eh? Yeah! Exciting! <laughs> okay, I'm gonna check the level now. Whew. Yeah, we're a bit over, a little bit over, but don't worry, just leave it there. You sure? Yeah, leave it there. Okay. <laughs> you know, we're still breaking in the cam as we're doing testing. So Sounds let it be. Good. Let it be. Shut it there, don't worry about it. I just want to make sure that carburetor. You know, maybe like you said, these carburetors need to be worked a bit, so uh, let her run. Put the fan on. Yes, sir. Okay, let's go get the O2 sensors on. The timing, we're leaving it at 35 degrees. I think that's where it likes it best. All right, let's go. Here we go.
not getting the uh, we're not getting back to 500 foot pounds of torque. I got the same horsepower, 426, 425.7. Okay. Oh, well, we lost the uh, the torque. Maybe the RPM back at a thousand, eh? See, instead of leaning, did you notice that the stumble is less right now? Yeah. Okay. That's good. Now the torque numbers. You know that if we lean it out, we're gonna get more torque. You know that, eh? Yeah. I want to see a 500 on the torque numbers. Maybe uh, you yeah. put it to 95. We tried 96, 94. Double check the timing. I don't know. Yeah. Okay. You know what? We'll put the timing on. Oil pressure is good. Pressure's good. Temps are good. Yeah. The idle is back there, right? Okay. Idle no, seems right. to be okay. What well, should we put the uh, base plate on? Might as let's well. Let's go. Okay, let's try the base plate. Sounds good. I'll get the three gaskets for the base. Put it on. There we go. Got it? Yes, sir. Okay, bring the base plate in. Okay. This is a factory air cleaner that's going to be on the car. It's got a factory air grabber set up put onto the car. And uh, we're going to use the original. All right. Should be right there. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Okay. Well, we. Uh, I didn't want to disappoint people. Yeah, this is, we, this is not the air cleaner that belongs. The so, top lid doesn't belong to this car. I have it upstairs somewhere in a box. But this is written six pack when it's a six barrel. And it's also written 340. So I don't want to show it because this is a big block for B engine, that's 383, right. six barrel. So let's not confuse people. Let's keep it simple. But this is the exact air cleaner that's going on the car with the air grabber. And let's see if it's going to change the air fuel ratio. And Max, if you're watching, here it is. Here we go. All right, sir. Let's see what we can pull off now. Okay. Right. You think it's gonna work? You know what, Nick? One way to find out for sure. I know, I know. I'm just uh, wondering if the oil is too hot. Uh, the oil's probably too hot. That's why you're not getting that 500 back. But maybe the engine's got it. Maybe we'll let it cool down. Let's cool it down, though. And you know the timing is exactly where it is. And now, uh, I, and I know it's running lean, George. But I like to get that 500 foot-pounds of torque back. We had 507 when we started. It's it's there. It should man. be there. It's there. It's just temperatures right now. Well, I hope that air cleaner makes a difference. Well, yeah, let's see. And the carburetor. And the carburetor. The carburetors we haven't touched at all. No, they're they're definitely in need of some looking into. Oh well. Do we pull more, more out? No. No. I just want to clean the dust off this. One way or the other, it's going to change. Let's go. I'm hoping on the high side, because you have a little bit of restriction, it'll pull a little bit more fuel. Yeah, that's true. Oh. But that's it is a 500 pound-feet of torque motor. It is. 426 horsepower. This is where we've got our best test so far, without the air cleaner. Better mark it down 35 degrees. Oh, two centers up. Here we go. Pressure's good. Vacuum's good. Temperature's. Uh,
It didn't run richer. Yeah. It didn't run rich. We're going to run richer. I'm going to do another test back to back. We had a big stumble there, right? Yeah. That's going to have to be worked out, like we said, with the car, but. Yeah, you know what? Power is what? 4, 490 is the torque. No, sorry. No, you're 492. 492.3. The torque Look. is, I want to see 500 with the air cleaner. Yeah. Let's keep trying. And the horsepower was still at 420. We just went under like 422. We, oh, we were blocking all the air, right? I know. With the air cleaner. But so. You see, it's running a little bit richer. Yep. It's running a little bit richer. So when you do, do the final calibration okay. with whatever setup, that's when you set it up for I know. that. I'm going to see if I'm going to stay with manifolds or with headers. Yeah. But I'm just going to do another test right after this. I want to do back to back with the air cleaner. Agreed. I don't usually judge it on one shot. Especially when there's a good bobble right at the The temperature is 154. We're going to get it back there. And let's go back to back. Oil pressure still there. You see that? Yep. We Very good. Pressure. George, put on the fan. Please. Then let's go. So far, so good, eh? Yep. You Look, see the, the stumble, eh? Yeah. I thought the stumble, I thought the stumble might be less with the air cleaner on. Yeah. But uh, the air fuel ratio is on the money. Practically on the money with the air cleaner on. Which tells you something, because if you add the manifolds too. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yes. But anyways, let's That's uh, why we can't play with the carburetors. Yes, we can maximize horsepower, but adding on everything else, yeah. it'll bring the air fuel ratio into effect. True. Here we go. Doors closed. Oil pressure good. Let's say you notice I brought yeah. it up slower. I did. Did a good job. Nice and smooth. Let's see what she gives us. Okay, let's see now. Our numbers are like four. I was hoping to get the same power. Torque is still there at 490. Yeah. Why? 490 foot pounds of torque. Just like a factory hem in a 440. Right here, 488.9. So that's like a 426 Hemi, like a 440, but this is a 426 wedge. It's a B, B in more air. It's a low deck block. And then we have the, uh, the, the hey, horsepower. By putting on that air cleaner, we're restricting it, right? Yes, we are. So all things considered, yeah. you got your air, uh, your air fuel mixture back yeah I got the air fuel air fuel ratio like in the low 13s but I prefer the high 12s but I'm gonna leave it at that because I might go with manifolds yeah, on this exactly and then we're gonna see again what we're gonna do yeah but the meantime is I'd like to see a little bit higher torque with the air cleaner the way it is uh, we can't stack them should I advance the timing more with the air cleaner on what do you think yeah, yeah 35 35. One last shot with the yeah. next trip. I don't, I don't need a time light on this. I'm, I'm sure we're gonna get it on. All right, let's go 36 and see what it does. 36, 37. I'll just uh, tap it, cool it down a little bit, and then, uh, yeah. So we're gonna match it just a bit. Can you get it or do I need to pull? No, oh, no, you're no, good. no, I'll get it, I'll get it. This is like 37, I'm sure. Leave it there, leave it down. We got an oil leak. <laughs> I'm very happy, we didn't seal, nothing. Zero, this look at that. This is good, Nick. This is good. The oil level is uh, perfect, okay. it's good. So we're good with the oil level. PCV valve, I don't need to connect because it shuts off at full throttle, so I don't need to bother with that. That's right. when it's something I'm concerned with idle. Yeah. I'm gonna worry about that. I'm ready. Bring down the water. This thing's gonna be uh, okay. a handful. I'd like to see, I'd like to see 500 torque with that air cleaner on, and at least 426 HP. We're at where the HP is at. 20 George, 422.4. Four more horses, and the torque is uh, 90. Four, 489. 489. 489. I want to see 500. 
he has it in the motor. It's just that the second you start adding things on, it starts slowing things down. Which, look, we got, on my Kowalski motor, I remember putting the air cleaner on. We got, we went from a four, very low 400, we went to a 399.7, and I left it at that. I mean, we did a few tests. You lose a few. I, I couldn't pass the 400. No, but again, you're, you're restricting airflow. The second you restrict yes. airflow, you yes. lose power. And you know the air cleaner, the air filter element? Mm -hmm. It's a factory piece. Look at that. Yep. But what does that tell you? This is the way they... It's not bad. No. If you think you've got almost 500 pound feet of torque in a car like that, yeah. he's going to make a mess out of that rear yeah. end. You know, we're going to have to install a short grip for yeah. sure. Okay. Yeah. That, those tires are going to be spinning like crazy. He's got, he's got the... Uh, you know what? He's got almost the same power like a Robert 446 pack. And, and less this cubic is a, inches. Hey? Smaller motor. Yeah, this is a smaller engine. And it and it the idles same and vacuum. This thing sits yeah. there just yeah. idling like a champ. Yeah, you're right. We got a lot of vacuum for power brakes. Don't forget, I need vacuum also for the air grabber. Yep. Oh, it'll work fine. I think we're ready to go. Yeah. The DO2 sensor on. George, put the fan on. Please. And <laughs> let's go. And let's make a couple of tests and that's Thank it. We're done. we're done. Then after that, we'll go into further testing in the future with exhaust manifolds. But in the meantime, let's finish off today with what we got. Headers, good. air cleaner, and let's get the best results. So we'll make another two tests. We just advanced the timing up to 36, 37 degrees. We're going to leave it there and see how it goes. And uh, here we go. So the idle, now the idle goes back to idle all the time. Yep. That's good. Here we go. You're green over here. I get the temperature up, eh? Yeah. Five point five. Got the horsepower back there. Okay. Nice job. It's the torque. The torque. You're still there. Four ninety. It's it's yeah. it's there, Nick. You're I not, know. I know. But you know It's me. hard to get. I Until still you have your final package. You I know. know what? For ten uh, pounds feet of torque. Yeah. Four twenty five point five is four twenty six horsepower, which is at five thousand RPM. So he doesn't have to rev the hell out of this engine. Yep. And uh, the torque number is forty nine point one four ninety. Just like a factory four forty and a Hemi. There's not much you can do there, Nick. Yeah, okay. A little temperature, you know what I'm saying? On a cold day, Wait. it'll have that extra torque. Why didn't we make one more test? With what? I don't know where it is. Because I want to check the timing since we brought it to 36, 37 degrees. Okay. Let's do it again. One more shot. Yeah, I'm just going to bring the temperature down to 160. We'll go at it one more time now. George, one more time. Wow. What do you think? Well, it's quality control, if you ask me. Well, we're just you know, making sure it is what it is. Yeah, I, maybe it's good. What do you think? <clears throat> Nick, I honestly, the numbers that you're doing with an air cleaner, that's fantastic. What do you say we take it off the air cleaner and make another test? You think? Yeah. My only thing is I don't like the fact that it goes lean on the, on oh, the high yeah. side. Yeah, look. I, I'd rather have the horsepower and train a little bit because he'll never get the traction on the low end to like say, wow, you know what I'm saying? That was extra 10, 10 pounds feet of torque made a difference. But the horsepower on the top side, when the thing is starting to stretch its legs in top gear, he's gonna appreciate that. Okay, so maybe we should leave it. That's my. That's just my feeling. And as always, check with the owner. But the numbers, Nick, are, are solid. Yeah, point and five. It comes, and it comes back down to idle. And oil pressure there. Yep. Idle. Yeah, the oil pressure. I want to see the oil pressure on idle now. Shall we make another test? It's up to you. This is good news, Nick. Not bad, not bad. We're almost the same numbers, which is not pretty, it's pretty cool. 
Unless you're just blasted right now. Temperature is 143. Yeah. Okay. Let me see if I have to run. Uh, 145, 149. No, I'd like to run the temperature 160, but anyways, we're gonna stay consistent uh, just under 150. Okay, there you go. Ready? Yeah, let her rip. Okay, here we go. Oh, 37 degrees uh, I never tried it with the air cleaner off what do you think let's go you see everything what? let's take a look let's yeah let's take a look take a quick look you want the whole thing off yeah I'm just curious. I just want to see the difference. Okay. I, I just need to do one more test. Just one more test. And then that's it. We'll finalize it with the headers. I'm curious. I just want to read numbers. I understand. I just want to read numbers. That's all. A six pack is vacuum operated. But when it comes to closing him, it's a mechanical linkage, like so. When you go full throttle, it's two barrels. Then when the vacuum kicks in on the vacuum secondaries, this is what happens. They're linked together with this linkage, and this is what you got. You got two barrel, six barrel. Not two, four, six. Two to six, like so. Full throttle, wide open throttle. Then when the linkage opens up, look. All four barrels additional. Additional four barrels open up, and then you got a six barrel setup. Well, you can see on the above camera. Okay, we're gonna do one more test, call it quits. All right. You know what? If we could manage with the manifolds not to lose too much, yeah, that would be yeah. the ideal package. That's right. That car's gonna be nice. Yeah, it sounds good, eh? Yeah, the engine sounds beautiful. And it's going to go in an amazing little it's a, car. It's a stock clip. You know what's good about it? It looks like a stock 383. Yeah, yep. That's good. You know, factory cast iron heads. Okay, there are late model 452 castings with the uh, hardened seats that could accept the unleaded fuel. The 906 castings, I have them in the back, which I could send them back to Australia if he wishes. But in the meantime, you can run unleaded fuel on this. Here we go. Pressure's good. How's the oil pressure? Good. It's good. Temperature's good. good. Here we go. Our final test for today. Oil pressure's great. 30. Yeah, 492 foot-pounds of torque. Horsepower is at 431. 
Nick, that's doing, awesome. Doing good. It's okay. That's awesome. Now, before I shut it down, I want to make sure there's no worry leaks, no sounds in the motor. All right, let's go take then a look. Then I'll get in touch with my clients, see how we're going to go. All right. Let's go take a nice, look. Nice, very nice. We hit the 430 mark. That is truly, truly awesome. There we go. Sounds good. No oil leaks. Went well. This is a good no number. No misfire. No. It gets up there. Solid. Oh. I'm looking for torque numbers, but uh, we did hit the 507 at one time. We did. So it's it, in. It's in. It's a 500. It's in. It's, in it's a 500 foot pounds of torque engine. It is. That's right. It's all good. It's all good. So I'm going to save this for now. We're right here. No air cleaner. Let me call my client next uh, couple of days. And we'll take it from there. Oh, he'll be happy. You know, for 3 Nick, it's pretty cool. This man. is freaking awesome. You know, we have to notch the block eh, for the Canadian rods not to hit the block. That's okay. Worth it. We had to cut down on the mains. Worth it. It is a 440 crankshaft. That's fine. It's good, man. It's good. Nick, it, it works. It idles, it has vacuum, yeah. it does all the right things. All the pressure is good too. Uh, I'd say it's a 500 pound foot torque motor. It is. I'd say it's a 426 horsepower motor. It is. A it little is. bit more. Okay. Uh, no leaks, good idle, good characteristics. Matching engine, it is the engine to the car. It is a P engine, it's not a race block, it's a low deck. And there you have it, you guys. This is where we maxed out with our headers. And then stay tuned for the future. I don't know when. Let's see what my clients decide what to do. Go with headers or with Josh Marvels. And then we'll keep you guys posted in the future. And here we are today, finishing off with a data testing for the engine for the 33 Roadrunner. So I want to thank you guys for watching us here on Nick's Garage. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Damn right. And you guys, if you look down below the video, we have a whole bunch of merchandise that you guys can buy. So whatever you like, buy it, love it, wear it, and enjoy it. And help spread the word of Mix Garage. And if you have some time, check out our Patreon page. We have extra content and you guys can watch it and take it from there. And we'll see you next time.